local coverage you can count on continues with Glenn Marini's Sports Report. Sports coverage you can count on. He had a career batting average of 305, was one of the best outfielders of the dead ball era, and helped Boston win the first ever World Series in 1903. Yeah, Charles Stahl, more commonly known as Chick, was on his way to a Hall of Fame career that was until his life ended at the age of 34. For this week's Throwback Thursday, we turn back the clock over a century for the story on the Summit City's least known sports star. During that time, during from 1880s through um, close to 1919, his sporting life was had also had, had an excellent reputation. Francis Strickland was the founder and the editor. He wrote uh, an article, wrote a book in 1914. He identified the six best outfielders from 1900 to 1912. Chick Starr was identified as one of the six. The other five were people like Ty Cobb, Chris Speaker, uh, Willie Keeler. All five of those are in the Hall of Fame. Uh, obviously, Chick Stahl isn't, and I think the reason is because his career was limited to 10 years. I only pray we'll meet another day. Born into a large Catholic family in a villa in 1873, Charles Sylvester Stahl moved to Fort Wayne at the age of seven when his father, Reuben, relocated his carpentry business. Nicknamed Chick, the young Stahl became a budding star on the diamond, signing his first professional contract in 1895 with Roanoke of the Virginia League. After a stop in Buffalo, he made the big leagues in 1897 as an outfielder for the Boston Bean Eaters, a franchise that eventually became the Boston Braves and then the Atlanta Braves. As a rookie, Stahl hit 354. Dennis Auger of the Society for American Baseball Research is one of the foremost authorities on Stahl's life and career. He still holds the uh, rookie record for highest batting average for a rookie uh, from the time the franchise started in 1876 up to the present. From 97 to 1900, which was four years, the National League is very much similar to, in a sense, what's going on presently in the Major League as far as a lot of offense. Okay, they didn't have the power hitters, but they had people with high batting averages and everything else. And Chick Stahl was always able to maintain on that upper echelon. Nicknamed the Husky Hoosier for his stocky frame, Stahl became a fan favorite for his play, earnestness, and according to many articles, his good looks. In 1901, he switched teams, going from the Boston Bean Eaters to the Boston Americans, a franchise eventually named the Boston Red Sox. Along with Hall of Famers Cy Young and Jimmy Collins, he helped Boston win the first ever World Series in 1903, scoring six runs with three triples as Boston beat the Pittsburgh Pirates four games to three. And the parallel I've given in an article or so is similar to like Thurman Munson, he wasn't the greatest player of his age or era, but he was definitely in the top, top brass. Uh, but because his career was limited to 10 years, you know, he just didn't have enough statistics to get any good all of it. Stahl was so well regarded that he was named player manager heading into the 1907 season. Boston held spring training in southern Indiana in West Baden, but on March 28, 1907, just months after being married, Stahl took his own life at the age of 34. So basically what it was was that he uh, had breakfast, checked the field, went back to his hotel room, and then um, drank a car, you know, of carbolic acid. And the famous saying that he said and attributed to him by the players is that he basically said, I couldn't help but get slow in the field. And so that's where people said, what is the get? Friends, people who might not have liked him, uh, reporters, everybody. Nobody has ever stated what has come up for the witness and said, this is what happened, or, this is what happened. And while there have been a number of theories published, including that he was being blackmailed, depression, and pressure for his new role as manager, the reason for Stahl's suicide remains one of the biggest mysteries in Red Sox and baseball history. But one thing is for sure, he was on track for the Hall of Fame 
before his life ended too soon. I'm Glenn Marini, and that's your local sports report.